Dobodiena. My childhood friend reached out to me with a request. He has a uh, enclosed balcony and he needs some uh, uh, organization in that area. So we chatted a bit and we came up uh, with three major requirements. So first of all, it has to be made to fit because it's rather confined, spa confined space. Second of all, it has to be relatively cheap. And third of all, it should look as neat as possible. And I've added one more, which is uh, user-friendly. In other words, it has to be uh, easy to assemble without any power tools or without any tools at all, actually. And as you can see, that's the final result. Please let me guide you through the building process. To reduce the cost of the build, I ordered uh, first class plywood only for the visible sides of the cabinets and the rest of the carcass was made out of uh, lower quality plywood. I borrowed this uh, sheet cart from the company next door and I was really loving it. I think I'm gonna make one for myself. Since I'm a, a rather lazy person, I didn't make any uh, detailed drawing up front. So I just cut the pieces I knew the sizes of and then I measured uh, the rest uh, as I progressed with the build. Uh, having a plan up front would have prevented me from a few mistakes, but that wasn't too bad at all. And I'm really fortunate to have a panel saw, and this is the type of project where this machine shines. It also has a scoring blade, but I removed it uh, because I mostly work with solid wood. Scoring blade uh, may have prevented a few uh, cross uh, grain uh, tear outs, but it, overall it wasn't too bad. It was clean cuts most of the time. And as you can see, cutting sheet goods with this machine is uh, just a walk in the park. It makes a perfect job every single cut, and I'm I'm absolutely loving this machine. Having this one in the workshop uh, just changed the way I work. <laughs> so once I got uh, most of the pieces cut, I took my crack chip and drilled pocket holes on the sides where it meets with the facial panel. So no screw head would be visible from the, from the front. And for all the non-visible sides, I just uh, simply used uh, screws because it's stronger and nobody cares if the screw head will be exposed. I tacked everything with a, a bread nailer just to make it uh, easier to assemble. And here's the moment I regretted for not having a plan up front because I forgot to make a room for the plint. So I had to take the back panel uh, off and make a channel for, for the plinth. And for this procedure I chose to use my shaper because I had a carbide teeth uh, head which makes uh, an easy and fast and clean uh, job of removing material. Basically just the same as the potato stack. So so it's nothing too fancy. So this uh, bench box uh, sits in the corner, so the plinth goes uh, uh, on the back side and on the one of the sides. So I had to move one of the of the panel, side panels uh, a bit in. So. I would make some room for the for the plant. So, like I mentioned, I, I was regretting for not making a fully detailed plan of the furniture, but when I think of it now, I 
guess I would have spent more time making the plan than fixing a few uh, minor mistakes. And since I haven't been to the uh, apartment where this this furniture will go, uh, I'm not sure how flat the floors are. So I'm installing uh, leveling feet so it can be easily adjusted. And I'm using uh, threaded inserts. Uh, and I am drill the holes only on the places where it can go into the side panel. That makes sense because I had to drill uh, uh, deeper holes to accommodate uh, for the for the thread of the feet. And off to the second uh, bench box build. The major difference uh, between these two are that this will have uh, two visible sides. So. In order to make it neat, I will have to join those visible sides at uh, 45 degrees. And in my opinion, the best tool for doing that is uh, a biscuit jointer. And I already learned my mistakes from the first uh, bench build, so I made some room for uh, the plint. So this uh, longer bench went uh, way, way smoother. And somehow I made one mistake on this uh, bench as well. When I was pre-cutting the facial panels, I didn't check uh, the grain direction. So these two uh, facial panels don't quite line up. Uh, fortunately, it's not that visible on the plywood. On the solid wood, it would be a major problem. And because this bench is way longer than the first one, so I had to add a section in the middle. And those two benches out of the way, I move to the uh, cabinet. I made a rabbit for the back panel and made some uh, room for the plinth. So the whole back panel is uh, offset it by the thickness of the plinth. And because there's gonna be uh, less weight on the top of the cabinet uh, in comparison with the bench, so I decided to use a thinner uh, sheet of uh, plywood for the for the backing. And I use regular screws in the places where the bench will cover the facial panel. And I could finally put everything together to see how it uh, looks. I also sent a few photos to my friend to ask uh, what he thinks. Maybe he has some suggestions. And actually he had one. He wanted a shelf in the middle of the cabinet. So I've got a few scrap pieces at the same, at the length of the height of the uh, shelf. And temporarily supported the shelf in place while I was uh, uh, fixing it with some screws. Now I had to make uh, covers and doors uh, for the furniture I built. So I bought some uh, European style hinges and I knew that they are designed for uh, standard uh, thickness uh, panels which is uh, 18 millimeters. And the plywood I used was 15, so I realized I need to thicken the back panels where the hinge is gonna screw onto. So 
I prepared a few uh, 3mm strips and glued them where they needed to be added. And this self-centering drill bit made a quick work of uh, assembling. And here's the second time. I regret it for not uh, having plants because I was certain I know where the hinge holes needs to be drilled, but uh, I was wrong. So I chose to remove uh, the bulk of the material from the back where the hinges, uh, hinge holes were drilled and glue some uh, plywood strips. And I made sure I will not be making this mistake uh, again in the future, so I bought a template for uh, European style hinges, which uh, leaves no chance for making a mistake. I forgot to order extended uh, shoulder hinges for the uh, cabinet doors, so I used the regular ones, uh, but I had to install a post where I could uh, screw the hinges onto. So since I already learned my mistakes, so the doors went uh, as smooth as they can go. Here you can see me using my uh, folding ruler as a spacer and it gives a great starting point for adjusting the hinges. But I faced another problem. As you can see it's uh, flush and even on uh, this side but it has a nasty gap on this side, so it appears the panel has a twist in itself, so I either had to cut it from a new sheet of plywood, but I chose another option and I split it in half and I will make two doors, so this way the twist won't be that visible. And having two doors solved another problem, which was the handle, and I decided I will use the same uh, cutter head to cut two grooves in each of the doors, creating an opening uh, to put your fingers in. And what I love for, about these European style hinges is that they have a lot of adjustability. Usually furniture like this attach together just by using some screws, but I thought I can make it a bit more user-friendly, if you will. So I decided I will use the same threaded inserts, I will sew those into the cabinet, and on the uh, bench boxes I will use uh, Allen key to screws. So this way the only tool you will need is the Allen key. And of course, to level the furniture out, uh, the client uh, may use the uh, leveling feet. I just used uh, these wedges because it's way faster. So the final piece of this uh, furniture unit uh, was this uh, ladder-like grid, which will be put against the wall, uh, where you can hang some uh, stuff and shelves and whatnot. The whole concept is pretty self-explanatory. I just cut a bunch of uh, same length and same dimension strips from the plywood and I made a groove in the middle in two of them. So these uh, middle pieces can be set into the groove without any measuring or thinking about it. And like I said, I was aware of making this as user-friendly as possible, so I thought uh, this should be attached to the cabinet, not to the wall itself. 
so no tools would be needed. So I simply prepared a couple of uh, strips of uh, steel to be attached to the ladders and then installed into the cabinet. It will come clear in a moment, just be patient. And I used polyurethane glue in this application mainly because I thought that when it expands it will go into all the openings and cracks where the metal bar meets the wood and make it even stronger. And I'm not sure if it worked or not but it was strong. So here it's coming clear how my plan gonna work. Now I just had to make uh, channels into that back uh, panel and I glued a couple of pieces of MDF and this uh, became my uh, guide for the router. This way I didn't have to think or measure or do any kind of math, I just had to line up the uh, groove onto the lines I drew for the bars. And my router width was 8 millimeters, and the groove had to be 10 millimeters, so I just uh, cut an offset piece. So, also just reducing the uh, error part, human error part of this uh, task. And of course, I had to cover those uh, channels because otherwise they wouldn't work. So I made these uh, covering plates. So I don't think you can get any more user friendly with this one. You just have to pin it in place and it's done. And the final bit of the build was to make a few shelves to go onto that ladder grid. I used one of the grid piece uh, and just wrapped it around with some uh, thinner plywood. We discussed the color palette with my friend and we chose to stain the whole furniture with some uh, chestnut colored uh, Minwax stain and because I didn't ed edge band it uh, any of the edges of the plywood I suggested to use uh, just black paint and cover those uh, plies. And I absolutely should have done this step before assembling this ladder piece. It would have saved me <laughs> like two or three hours of work. But you know how they say, there is no remedy for stupidity. Or something along the lines. And to make those transition lines even crispier, I sanded all the minor bleed outs before applying any stain. And I really think this uh, black uh, edges made, made a difference, it looks way uh, neater. And for the finish uh, I used uh, Osmo, as in most of my projects. I really love this oil. And after the old has cured, I just threw everything together and it was done. 
So uh, as you have seen, I made quite uh, a few mistakes during this build. I hope my friend will like it, even though it's not uh, flawless, but it was done with uh, kind intentions. Anyhow, thank you for watching and see you on Wednesday. Bye-bye.